Leah's life came to a halt abruptly after giving birth to black triplets, she was kicked out of her house. And her husband wanted nothing to do with her. However, ten years later, something shocking happened. The staff members, not occupied with their duties, gathered to witness the commotion unfolding at the entrance. A man named Jonas repeatedly unloaded bags from his car and threw them at the door. Visibly furious, security agents approached him kindly to ask him to stop. But he acted as if they were simply shadows, peacefully attempting to talk to him. When they finally had to restrain him, he swung wildly, punching one of them before they all brought him down. After being pushed to the ground, he confessed a chilling story. He told them how his wife, Leah, had cheated on him and tried to blame him for the pregnancy from another man. He was white. And so was she. So it made no sense for her to give birth to black children. Let alone triplets. He yelled at them that he was done with this stupid marriage. The bags belonged to Leah. And since she couldn't take everything to the hospital, she would have to come pick them up herself. He didn't care that she had just given birth, he only knew that she had hurt him deeply. And he wanted nothing more to do with her. When the security men released Jonas, he headed to the room where Leal lay, still sore from childbirth and unable to move freely. The newborns cried around her. And she looked at them without a trace of feeling. He told her never to come back to their house and to return to the black man she had had an affair with to raise the triplets. Leah stared at him as if he were a ghost, she couldn't believe what she was hearing. In reality, he was kicking her out. She knew that giving birth to three black babies was mysterious. Considering they were a white couple, Jonas had been in the delivery room but had left as soon as the babies were born and he saw that they were black. Leah had assumed he would return to talk things out. She had no idea he had only come for his things. She begged him not to leave her like this. As she had nowhere else to go. Especially as a breastfeeding mother. And taking care of all the children without his support would be emotionally and physically devastating. But Jonas yelled at her to shut up saying she and the children could rot in hell for all he cared. Jonas cast one last devilish glance at Leah before angrily leaving the hospital room that day. She could barely think clearly. She called Jonas numerous times. But he refused to answer. She also sent him messages. But all went unanswered. It was as if he had completely blocked her out of his life. And being trapped in the hospital. There was ridiculously little she could do. Feeding her babies and caring for them was the only thing that could distract her from her problems. However, when she looked at them and saw their dark skin, she began to wonder again what had happened. Her marriage had fallen apart just because of her baby's skin color. And she knew that unless she solved the mystery, things would only get worse. With no other option. She called her mother Agatha for help. And as expected, the elderly woman rushed to her aid. Agatha couldn't understand why such a joyful moment could turn into something capable of destroying a marriage. However, she chose not to ask questions because she knew Leah was going through a lot. The first thing was to ensure all of Leah's belongings were safely stored. She loaded them all into her vehicle and took them to her own home. Then she returned to the hospital to assist Leah. Having one child was stressful enough. But having three. Agatha knew Leah was very busy. With all these problems with Thomas. She knew Leah wasn't in the right frame of mind to handle things on her own. So. She chose to be by her side. She made sure Leah ate at the right times and also breastfed the babies when they were hungry. When Leah felt tired and went to sleep, Agatha made sure the triplets were asleep or not making noise. Despite her presence,
Those first hellish days were still difficult for Leah to bear. Getting over the loss of Jonas was hard for her because for a long time. All Leah could do was cry. Having a baby was one of the best things that could happen to any couple. So she didn't understand why when her turn came. It ended up destroying her marriage. She couldn't think clearly. Couldn't even breastfeed the triplets properly because her mental health kept bothering her. She was so depressed that it started to show in her health. That night. She had a high fever. Fortunately. The doctor immediately got to work on her. And by the next morning. She was back in full health. Despite what Jonas had done. She still believed she could win his heart. She was sure that once he discovered the truth. He would come running back to her. For now. She was just acting on emotions. She was confident he would still love her. Her phone buzzed next to her. Notifying her of an incoming message. It was an alert from her bank informing her that the joint account she had with Jonas had been emptied. When she saw the message. She nearly lost her mind. Those were her savings, she had been the one who had put most of the money into the account. Jonas rarely did. And when he did. It was always scarce. She had always believed she had more decision-making power over that money. She had never expected him to go behind her back and steal the money in that way. It was at that moment she realized Jonas truly wanted to ruin her. And it was becoming too much. He had kicked her out of the house. He knew she needed that money. But he took it anyway. It meant he didn't care what happened to her. And at that moment. She stopped caring about him too. The only thing that mattered to her was the well-being of her babies. She had finished trying to get Jonas on her side. She called the police and reported the theft. She would have also called the bank and requested they freeze the joint account. But it was too late because every last penny had been taken from the account. The police launched their investigation as they tried to find him. But they soon realized it wouldn't be easy. Jonas had fled the state on the same day he emptied the joint account. He had skipped town. Which meant they couldn't find him and recover the stolen funds. Stolen money. That period was one of the darkest for Leah. She was always gloomy as she pondered her next course of action. However. No matter how much she thought about it. Nothing seemed to be the solution. It was hard to believe that her life. Which had been perfect just a week ago. Had turned upside down before her eyes. She didn't know how to move forward with her life. Fortunately. Her mother came to the rescue. Agatha, her mother. Came to pick her up from the hospital by the time Leah had fully recovered and was ready to leave. Agatha settled all the outstanding debts. And together they all moved to Agatha's condominium on the outskirts of the city. Everything that happened was a huge setback for Leah. But she refused to let it overwhelm her. She was determined to provide a dignified life for her children and her mother. So she started looking for work. Fortunately. She got a job not long after. And although it didn't pay impressively. It was enough to get her started. Leah worked hard. And when the triplets were old enough to go to school. She started working double and triple shifts so that money wouldn't be a problem for them. Somehow. They had managed to find the perfect balance in their lives and made it work. But like almost anything else good in her life. It couldn't last forever. When the triplets were five years old. There were a series of encounters that turned their lives upside down. Strange and creepy notes began to appear in the house. Always with the same background. The notes accused her of cheating and promised to make her suffer for it. Often. The notes gave graphic descriptions of exactly how she would pay. It was truly terrifying because no matter how hard Leah tried. She couldn't make it stop. Every few days. She found a new strange note.
at first. They were always sent to her email. But later she started finding them inside the house when she returned from work. She always had the feeling that someone had been through her house. And indeed. There would be a note under her pillow. This terrified her immensely. She knew it was all Jonas doing. He had managed not to hide all that time. And he was finally emerging out of nowhere just to torment her. She refused to give him that satisfaction. So she reported everything. The police told them about the notes and how each one was more threatening than the next. And how it was targeting her life. Tris could do little no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't find Jonas. He was so perfectly hidden. Just like five years ago. He kept running circles around the police. This didn't bode well for Lia. She changed all the locks in her mother's house and installed alarms to ensure that any attempted robbery would immediately alert not only the police but also the neighbors. She tried to get back to her life. Despite her concern about Jonas, she was preparing for a promotion at work. And getting that promotion would greatly improve her standard of living. With her mother taking care of the children, she focused on preparing for the promotion interview. And when it finally came, she performed excellently and got the promotion. It was a cause for great celebration. Finally, she had wonderful news because she knew that now all the financial problems they had faced were about to end. That day, Lia went to pick up the triplets from school. And when she saw them, one of them handed her a note. As soon as she read the note, her blood froze in her veins. And her heart pounded in her chest. She couldn't believe it. It was the same note Jonas had been threatening her with. She took the note and read it. It was the same. But this time it also said that no matter how hard she tried, he would always be able to catch her. Terrified. She asked the triplets how they had gotten the note. And they told her that a strange man had given it to them. The man had told them to give it only to her. As she listened, Lia felt hot tears burning her eyes and clouding her vision. After all he had done to them, he still had the audacity to go after her children. She became even more frightened at the thought. She could have easily endured it when he was after her. But now that the children were involved, she couldn't allow it. And the fact that the police still hadn't found him frightened her even more. That day, she went through so many different emotions as she tried to process what her life had become. She cried profusely, screamed into the empty sky, and sighed heavily as she wondered. She had loved could hurt her in that way. So, to stop further threats to her children. She decided it was time to move to another city. The move was difficult, she had to leave just after securing the promotion of her life. It was so unfair. But she couldn't do anything about it. Her children didn't want to go either, they couldn't bear the idea of leaving behind their school and friends. They loved living there. However, Lia told them that until everything was sorted out, they couldn't stay there. Their lives and well-being were more important to her. And now that she knew Jonas would do anything to find her, she needed to go somewhere he would never find her. Finally, they moved to another city. They managed to rebuild their lives there. Along with Agatha, she enrolled the triplets in a new school and found a decent job that suited their needs. Slowly, they made the city their home. And soon everything related to Jonas and his unpleasant messages became a thing of the past. All Lia wanted now was to move forward with her life. And that's what they did. When the children were ten years old, Lia decided to organize a party for them. It was a momentous occasion because she also wanted to celebrate. As her birthday was a testament to how she had kept everything together despite things going poorly for her years ago. However, 
while the birthday party was being celebrated. Liao looked worse, as if her sins had caught up to her. Finally, when Jonas saw her, he immediately began to beg for forgiveness, saying he was sorry and willing to accept the triplets as his own children. This was so unexpected that for a moment, she thought it was a joke. However, Jonas's serious expression told her otherwise. She asked what had suddenly changed his mind. And he recounted a chilling story. He had always known the triplets were his after his mother found out the children had returned. She had taken him aside and told him how she had cheated on Jonas's father. She was terrified that her baby's birth would bring the affair to light. But when Jonas was born, he looked white. And no one would have guessed he was also black. To save face, she chose to take the secret to her grave. But when she discovered that the same secret was destroying Jonas's marriage, Jonas didn't care that the children inherited their dark skin from him, it didn't change his mind. He confessed to Liao that he had fallen out of love with her and had been seeing a girl he met at work. He saw in the triplets the perfect opportunity to break up with her without casting suspicion on himself. That's why he was adamant about anything she said and refused to listen. He broke up with Lia, stole her money, and went to live with his girlfriend. However, it turned out to be a big mistake because the girl had only been with him for money. And once it was gone, she left him mercilessly and moved on. That's when he realized the treasure Lia had been and how foolish he had been to let her go. He tracked her down at her mother's house but was surprised to see that she was doing well. That only infuriated him. And he started sending all those unpleasant messages out of jealousy. Later, he managed to locate them in the new city by going to Agatha's old house and asking around. When it was over, he begged for forgiveness, saying he had been foolish then. But now he knew better and was ready to accept his children. But she rejected him, reminding him of how he had kicked her out while she was still breastfeeding the triplets. How he had refused to give her a chance when she begged him. And how he had terrified her with his notes that later forced her to move. Then she said that nothing would make her go back to him, he didn't deserve it at all. He left her place dejected and she immediately called the police who managed to find him and arrest him. Now that he was locked up, she could breathe easy and continued working to have a good life for herself and her children. Soon enough, she was going to tell them about Jonas. But she believed the time for all that would come. In the meantime, she was determined to enjoy her children as best as she could. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Next, let's watch another similar story. A black waiter named Thomas served for years a disabled white woman named Stacy. One day, Stacy left Thomas the keys to her apartment and a shocking note. It was a cool afternoon, and Thomas was taking orders as they came in. It was the usual rush hour at the restaurant and Thomas spent his time attending to all the customers. As the only black waiter in a restaurant owned and dominated by whites, Thomas worked hard every day to prove his worth. Sometimes he dealt with unreasonable customers who were harsh to him. Some even refused to let him serve them because of his color. But Thomas never let it bother him. Instead, he let his kindness and free spirit shine through. Soon, Thomas won the heart of a regular customer who had come to know him through his acts of kindness. That night, Thomas was almost done with his shift, he only had 30 minutes left to wrap up the day. As he worked on tallying his finances for the day, he heard the jingle of the doorbell, indicating the entrance of a customer. Thomas looked up and saw a disabled lady entering the restaurant. She was a white woman who appeared to be around 50 years old.
Thomas's heart went out to her when she struggled to get through the door with her wheelchair. Without hesitation, Thomas quickly ran to her side to help. With genuine warmth, he assisted her into the restaurant, treating her with utmost care and respect. The lady, who introduced herself as Stacy, was deeply grateful. She was used to doing everything herself. So she was profoundly touched that a total stranger would go out of his way to help her. For Thomas. It was an honor. Kindness and hospitality were his second nature. And he never hesitated to help anyone. Regardless of their color or race. Thomas's shift had already ended. But his kindness knew no bounds. Thomas had finished his shift but didn't hesitate to serve Stacy whatever she wanted. He gave her VIP treatment. And she couldn't stop smiling from ear to ear. Thomas stayed after serving her. Ensuring Stacy got everything she wanted. When it was time to leave. Thomas cheerfully escorted her out of the restaurant and helped her into her car. Stacy was very grateful and promised to come back the following weekend. And when she did. Thomas treated her with warmth and kindness simply seeing her as a motherly figure. Thomas realized that Stacy had been through a lot in life. Despite her bright smile, she had the saddest eyes he had ever seen. So, Thomas made it his mission to put a smile on Stacy's face whenever and wherever he could. Just two weeks later, Stacy arrived at the restaurant as usual, only to be stopped at the entrance by the new senseless manager named Northrop. According to Northrop's bizarre excuse for stopping her, Stacy's wheelchair was obstructing other diners from entering and exiting the restaurant freely. So, Northrop harshly ordered Stacy to leave and never return to the restaurant again. Stacy sat in her wheelchair, looking at Northrop with a mix of confusion and humiliation. Fine. Since you don't want to leave of your own accord, then I'll have to ask the guards to escort you out. Northrop barked. Stacy, now on the verge of tears, was too shocked to move an inch. She had never felt so humiliated by her disability. Nobody in their right mind should be so rude to a disabled woman like her. But Northrop was a sadist through and through and he wasn't bluffing. Guards, shouted the new manager to two nearby guards. Please. Get rid of this disabled thing from here. Northrop ordered. The men, more than eager to impress their new boss, sprang into action immediately and approached Stacy. Visibly frightened. The guards were closing in on Stacy like a pack of wolves closing in on their prey when a thunderous voice interrupted them. Anyone who lays a hand on this poor woman will have to deal with me. All involved in this. Drama and within reach of the baritone voice. Including Stacy herself. Abruptly turned towards the direction from which the voice came to see who the speaker was. And who else? But Thomas. Thomas had been watching all the drama unfold and came running to Stacy's side as soon as he saw the guards lunging towards her. By then, Stacy was already trembling with fear. Thomas embraced her immediately and told her, It's okay. I won't let them harm you. You're safe. His presence immediately gave Stacy the much needed sense of comfort. And she felt immensely relieved instantly. As for the two guards, Thomas's chilling countenance stopped them in their tracks, both looking back and forth between Northrop and Thomas. Northrop recovered from his initial shock in time. Then, in an attempt to regain control of the situation slipping out of his hands, he snapped at Thomas. You're fired. You can leave the restaurant with your disabled friend. Thomas's eyes widened when he heard those words. Fear gripped him as he realized the consequences of losing his only source of income. That would plunge his family into misery. 
as everyone depended on him to survive. Setting aside his own troubles, Thomas gently led Stacy out of the restaurant. Stacy soon offered her condolences to Thomas. First, she profusely thanked him for his kindness in coming to her defense. But at the same time, Stacy made it very clear to Thomas that he shouldn't have sacrificed his job for her. Thomas, clearly struggling to put on a brave and happy face, just told Stacy not to worry about him. That he was fine. But Thomas wasn't fine. As soon as he helped Stacy into her car and she drove off, he found a secluded corner at the back of the restaurant and let it all out. He sat there alone, crying for what seemed like an eternity. Afterwards, Thomas got up and headed home, where he continued his sobbing. If only he knew that fate had other plans in store for him. Just two days later, Thomas received a call. The restaurant's secretary immediately instructed him to resume his work at the restaurant. Thomas couldn't believe what he was hearing. It turned out that one of Thomas's colleagues, Eva, had captured all the drama on her phone camera. Eva had a vendetta against Northrop, she didn't like the rules he had enforced since taking over as restaurant manager. The restaurant owner, Watson, was incredulous that someone he had hired as manager could be so rude to a disabled woman. Without delay, Watson contacted his lawyer, Mark, who visited the restaurant the next day to rectify the situation. Northrop was fired, and the assistant manager was promoted. Furthermore, Watson ordered Thomas to be reinstated immediately. This miraculously restored Thomas to his job. Much to Stacy's joy when she learned of his good fortune. Time flew by, and one afternoon Stacy entered the restaurant hoping to enjoy a good meal and warm conversation with Thomas. But she was surprised to find him in a secluded corner of the restaurant. Seeming quite downcast. Stacy approached Thomas and asked him what the problem was. But he insisted that everything was fine. Stacy knew Thomas well. So she inquired further. Finally, Thomas opened up and told Stacy that he had just been evicted from his apartment. He had been sharing the flat with a friend and couldn't afford the rent since almost all his salary went towards caring for his sick mother. Unfortunately for Thomas, his friend and flatmate had moved out of the city three months earlier in search of greener pastures. Unable to afford the rent alone, Thomas had been forced to leave the apartment and ended up on the streets. Stacy felt sorry for Thomas and tried to cheer him up, reassuring him that everything would be okay. Three days later, Thomas received a small package from a courier service. With a curious glance, his fingers trembled slightly as he opened the package. Unsure of its origin. Inside, nestled between layers, were a set of keys and a carefully folded note. Thomas's heart skipped a beat when he recognized Stacy's elegant handwriting. Perplexed. He couldn't understand why Stacy would send him keys. No matter how much he pondered, he couldn't find an explanation. Could it be that Stacy was back in town, upon his return? He needed her to run some errands at his house. Hence he asked for the keys to meet with him in private. All these thoughts were running through Thomas's head as he felt the note with trembling hands. He unfolded the note. His eyes scanned the words with a mixture of disbelief and gratitude. My dearest Thomas. It feels so right to do this. You have been an incredible friend and companion for two years. Going out of your way to show me extreme kindness and hospitality. As a token of my appreciation. I leave you the keys to my apartment. Please take good care of it. With love. Stacy. Stacy's words resonated in his mind. Heartfelt gratitude for her kindness and offering him the keys to her house as a gesture of appreciation. Overwhelmed by the gesture, 
Thomas felt a lump in his throat and tears welling up in his eyes. He couldn't believe it. Stacy was offering him her home. Thomas felt his breath catch when he struggled to comprehend what was unfolding before him. How was it possible that a stranger would entrust him with such fortune? Yet, Thomas realized that he had shared beautiful memories with Stacy over the past two years. They had shared good times, warm conversations, and he had received many good pieces of advice from her. But Thomas still thought that all of this wasn't enough for her to trust him with her apartment. Besides, they weren't even related by blood. Filled with a sense of gratitude, Thomas managed to suppress his excitement as he was still on duty at the restaurant. He would head to her house first thing after his shift ended. When his shift finally ended, Thomas wasted no time. With the keys tightly clutched in his hand, he made his way to the address Stacy had provided. Anticipation coursed through him when he walked through the streets he knew so well. Each step brought him closer to his destination. Faced with the imposing duplex, Thomas couldn't help but feel a sense of awe. The house stood as a testament to Stacy's generosity, a beacon of hope in his darkest hour. With trembling fingers, he inserted the key into the lock, the soft click echoing in the calm twilight air. As the doors swung open, Thomas stepped into the warmth of his new home. His eyes widened with disbelief at the sight that greeted him. The spacious interior was bathed in a gentle golden light. The air perfumed with the scent of fresh flowers. Every corner seemed to radiate warmth and welcome. As if enveloping him in a comforting embrace. Though the house was now his. Stacy's sweet floral fragrance still lingered in the air. Overwhelmed with emotion. Thomas sank into the luxurious sofa. His heart overflowing with gratitude. In that moment. He realized that his life had changed forever. All because of an act of kindness. A gesture of generosity that had touched his soul in a way he never could have imagined. Overnight. He had gone from homeless waiter to a homeowner. A concept beyond his wildest dreams. Despite his newfound wealth, Thomas found himself yearning for Stacy's presence at the restaurant. Yet, she was nowhere to be found, leaving Thomas perplexed and longing for closure. It was as if she had vanished into thin air. Week after week, Thomas hoped to see Stacy walk through the restaurant doors, eager to assist her and fulfill her usual orders. Above all, he missed the warm conversations they shared whenever she graced the restaurant with her presence. Weeks turned into months. And still, there was no sign of Stacy. Thomas was filled with worry and concern, praying and hoping that she was all right. Even with his newfound wealth, Thomas continued to work at the restaurant. He had grown to love the job delighting in the joy on people's faces when he served them. Thomas threw himself into his work, finding solace and purpose. Stacy's whereabouts a year and a half later. A lawyer named Ivan entered the cozy restaurant where Thomas worked. Locating Thomas he approached him with a somber expression indicating he needed to talk. Thomas. Wiping his hands on his apron. Welcomed Ivan to a table and waited anxiously. Ivan introduced himself as Stacy's personal lawyer. Thomas's heart sank, preparing for bad news. Ivan didn't beat around the bush, he told Thomas that Stacy had passed away. Shock coursed through Thomas, tears filling his eyes. Stacy had been such an important part of his life, her sudden absence was like a hole in his heart. When Thomas struggled to process the news, Ivan explained he was there to read Stacy's will. Thomas nodded, his mind reeling with questions and emotions. Ivan began to reveal details of Stacy's life, painting a picture of a woman who had endured immense hardships, 
Ivan disclosed that Stacy had been married to a wealthy man, however. Tragedy struck when they suffered a devastating car accident. Thomas listened intently as Ivan described how Stacy had survived the accident but was left paralyzed and emotionally scarred. The accident shattered her world, leaving her confined to a wheelchair and tormented by PTSD. Despite her physical limitations, Stacy demonstrated remarkable resilience. Managing her late husband's business empire with a trusted team overseeing operations. Thomas marveled at Stacy's strength. Imagining the challenges she must have faced while dealing with her own trauma. However, fate dealt Stacy another cruel blow when she was diagnosed with a terminal liver disease. Thomas couldn't fathom the weight of such a prognosis on someone who had already endured so much. As Ivan spoke, Thomas's admiration for Stacy grew, realizing the depth of her resilience and fortitude. He wondered how she could still carry on her late husband's business chain even after being crippled by the fatal accident and suffering from PTSD. Stacy continued living with a smile on her face. But over the years, she knew the time would come when she had to leave her estate to an heir. She hadn't had children. So there was no one to inherit the fortune and family business. She didn't trust any of her relatives. So they weren't even an option for her. As time passed, Stacy grappled with that thought in her head. Beyond being smart and well informed, Stacy needed someone with empathy and compassion. Someone who wouldn't be swayed by wealth and treat others like garbage. Initially, Stacy intended to leave her estate to Betty, her caregiver. But betrayal thwarted. Betty had run away with a significant sum of money. Stacy had trusted her because Betty had been there to attend to her needs after Stacy's husband's passing. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to Stacy, Betty had warmed her way into Stacy's heart to gain her trust. And when that happened, Betty had gone ahead with her plans to elope with her lover with money worth 5000 Disheartened by the betrayal, Stacy found herself at an insecure crossroads of whom to trust with her legacy. Although she quickly found another replacement for Betty, she could never trust a caregiver again. Then fate intervened once more when Thomas entered Stacy's life. His genuine kindness and unwavering support touched her heart in a way she never thought possible. Through their friendship, Stacy found solace and companionship amid her pain. Grateful for Thomas's kindness and friendship, Stacy made the heartfelt decision to leave him her entire estate along with a significant sum of money. It was her way of expressing gratitude for his unwavering support and a testament to the profound impact he had on her life. Before her passing, Stacy had returned to her country home to spend her final days. She knew her days were numbered. So she had planned to spend the last days in solitude with her will written and ready. Stacy was confident she could have a peaceful death. When Ivan concluded his narration, Thomas was overcome with a mix of emotions, gratitude, disbelief, and profound sadness for the loss of his dear friend. But amid the sadness, there was also a ray of hope, the knowledge that Stacy would live on through him and her kindness and generosity would continue to touch others' lives. And so, Thomas, once a humble waiter, found himself inheriting not only wealth but also a profound sense of purpose to honor Stacy's memory and continue spreading kindness and compassion in a world that sorely needs it. With a heavy heart but renewed determination, Thomas embarked on the next chapter of his life. Eternally grateful. Grateful for the gift of friendship Stacy bestowed upon him and the lessons she imparted, Thomas stepped forward to provide his mother with the proper medical attention she needed. He moved her out of the state to receive top-notch medical care. And for his siblings, Thomas ensured they all attended school, providing them with everything they needed. He also bought the family a six-bedroom mansion in the heart of the city vowing that none of them would ever experience hardship again. 
In honor of Stacy, Thomas built an academy for the disabled. In his academy, he sought to share his mindset that everyone is equally important in society and deserving of the same rights and opportunities as others. He believes that kindness remains profitable in today's world. As it did for him. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.